The day I became a widow was February 24th, 2009. I heard my dog bark. And so I looked up at the front door and there was, the door was open, it was just a glass door. And I saw two men in army uniforms standing there. And I knew exactly what that meant. So they were there to notify me that my husband had been killed. And that was absolutely the hardest day of my life. This meant that my child was going to grow up without his father. And I know what that feels like. Um, I lost my dad when I was six. And I didn't want that for my children. They had the best father on the planet. And now it was taken from him. I knew I had to pick up the pieces. I just didn't know where to start. Um, but then four days later is when I found out I was pregnant with my second child. And that was the start of our new life. We had um, a couple different memorial services for him, uh, for my husband. And, you know, knowing I was pregnant during those helped keep me going. It definitely gave me strength that I don't know that I would otherwise have. And it also gave me something to look forward to. Um, I knew that I was going to be, you know, carrying on his legacy once again with my second child. My husband was a family man, and he wanted a large family. Um, most of all, he wanted to give our son siblings. So knowing that I could do that was just so important to me, and it just gave me so much hope for the future. All during my husband's deployment, we had talked about conceiving another child, and I even made him change his R&R &R dates, because um, I told him his original dates wouldn't work, because I knew that I wasn't fertile at that time. Um, so he changed his R&R &R dates, and he told me that going to his commander and asking him to change his R&R &R dates was very embarrassing. I definitely thought that it was a miracle that this happened. Um, I call him my little miracle baby. My pregnancy was definitely uh, difficult. There was all the normal, you know, um, ups and downs. Your hormones are crazy. Things make you sick, and um, but then I had the added stress, I think, just from grief, um, and I didn't want to eat, but I forced myself to eat. Um, you know, I just forced myself to do things that I know otherwise I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done. Everyone recommended I go to grief counseling, um, I see a therapist, but I refused to do that um, because I didn't want to really feel those emotions, because I didn't want that stress to, to be brought upon my baby inside. Mothers have to stay strong for their kids, so that's just what we're programmed to do. Yeah. So it's finally time to give birth to my son, and I had my sister with me, my mom with me, and some of my in-laws, but at the same time we, you know, knew that my husband should be there. That's something he should be at, the birth of his child. So I had my cardboard cut out of him to look at, and that helped. It helped a lot. It, it was really hard to be going through it without my husband there. That's who you should have in your delivery room. It was awkward having my mom and my sister there. Uh, I didn't really want that, um, but it happened. It was just a really emotional time. Yeah. So I finally delivered my baby. I looked at him and he was a spitting image of his father. Um, it was just remarkable. His face just looked just like him. I got home and it was Halloween and my older son wanted to go trick-or-treating. And so there I was, two days from delivering, walking my son, both children now, down my street, trick-or-treating. That's what he wanted to do. I wasn't gonna let him miss out on Halloween, so I did what I had to do. But I knew at that moment that it was gonna be hard. I knew I wasn't gonna get any breaks. Um, you know, it was definitely full swig into it the minute I brought my son home. So I keep pictures of my husband everywhere around the house. Um, we talk about him all the time. I talk about him with my children. I tell stories about him. And every once in a while, like something new will come up that I'll have forgotten about. My, my kids will do something, just a mannerism or something. And I'll just think, oh my gosh, like he used to do that. So it makes me smile. It, and um, they keep him alive with me and, and I try to keep him alive you know with them I never thought I was gonna be a single mom um, I definitely didn't plan for this you know and when my son says I miss daddy I just say I do too you know because um, I do I miss him every day 
I'm so lucky to have my children, especially my younger son. Um, and, and that just keeps me going every day, how lucky I am to have this wonderful life. Thank you, Smith. Say I love you. I miss you a lot. Think about you all the time. But talking to you and you telling me that everything's going great back home makes things much better for me here. I love you, sugar. I miss you. And I will see you and talk to you soon.